In this radio's golden anniversary, we at 3UZ thought it would be appropriate to look at some of the many facets of radio over the years and the various changes that have taken place. Firstly, news. In years gone by, news was more relaxed and presented in a proper story form. Here's an example from Clive Waters on the scene moments after an armed hold-up. A fugitive with police in hot pursuit seeks refuge in an Ackland Street continental pastry shop. Firstly, he wrestles with the Danish chef. So I took his arm to hold him, but he was wrestling, and I, I had my, my arm on his, on his neck, and I call uh, Peter here, and he can call in the back the police. So I called the police. I was resting here inside the bakehouse, and just when I heard the police coming here at the bakehouse, I couldn't help him anymore because he was desperate. You could see his eyes were wild. He then bounds through the shop and startles the manageress. When he came through the shop, what happened? I was standing outside the door. Next minute, the man came rushing through, shoved me in the back. I uh, went out, to, like, toward the gutter, and I screamed. What did you say? Shit! <laughs> That's the pitfalls of live interviews. But John Ford recording Saturday night's newsbeat gives an even more descriptive reason for not going to air live. Was anyone with you? No, I was sitting on my own. Mind you. Get Is anybody hurt there? I beg your pardon. Put that in your ass. You rude old man. I am a rude old man because you are, you are an inquisitive old bastard. Would you say that again? I don't think anyone heard you. Well, I'm just telling you. Try, mind... try again, will you? No. Go and get fucked. I'll punch you right up the fucking ass. You, you will, old will you? Cunt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I'll just give you a backhander in front of these people to let you know if you want to. Would you? My word, I would. You do all right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well. Have you ever given a thought to the smooth presentation that you hear when a reporter goes to air in a news service? It's the sole work of the reporter himself, using his years of experience. One such example comes from veteran radio man Alan Lappin, as you hear in this finely edited sports report. This is Alan Lappin at the Commonwealth Golf Club. We're broadcasting from the Commonwealth Golf Club on the... Oh, now listen, mate, just take the scores down and you read them. Yeah, right, Alan. Guy Watson. <laughs> <laughs> Guy Wollstoneham at this stage is eight under, and he's shitting in. He's been up since three o'clock this morning, pal. Oh, uh, God. Now yeah. I'll do it, I'll yeah. do it. You poor old bastard. Okay, I'll do it, I'll, I'll do it. I'll hand you over to Johnny McDonald, he can have a listen in. You, you just go straight ahead. All and right. The I'm just going to let the tape run on, Al. Okay. It doesn't matter if you're fit don't broadcast the wrong bit of it. Oh, no. <laughs> right on, mate. This is Alan Mappin broadcasting from Commonwealth Golf Course where the Victorian uh, Open Championship is being held at the moment and we've had a clear leader, Guy Wollstoneham. At the 31st hole is 8 under, which is quite a commanding lead. The nearest to him is uh, Isayo Aki from Japan, who is 4 under. Vic Bennett from New South Wales with a 73 today is 3 under. Tony Kendall, New Zealand. And a 71, which is a pretty good score in these conditions, which are perfect, really, and that's the part of the course. Uh, Billy Dunn from New South Wales had a 60... Oh, let's just start again. A 73. Well, look, I'm a disc jockey, not a golf ride. Uh, you're right. You... Yeah, look, I'm going to let the tape run now. I'll just run right through it. No matter when you start what time or when, is? it'll be right. You're going to put it in the 6.30 news. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now, this is Take It. Good evening, everybody. This is... Oh, oh, no. Hello. Where's my book? This is Alan Mappin at Commonwealth Golf Course on the occasion of the Victorian Open Golf Championship. We have a clear leader at the moment, and that's Guy Wollstoneham, former Great Britain and now Victorian. Guy Wollstoneham is uh, leading at the 31st hole by eight strikes. Next. Oh, shit. This is Alan Mappin reporting from Commonwealth Golf Club. The Victorian Open Golf Championship is now in progress. It's still on. It's still very daylight. And Guy Wollstoneham has taken the lead sensationally. After 33 holes, he is eight under par. His nearest competitor is Isao Hayoki of Japan. He's four under par. And uh, Vic Bennett from New South Wales checks in three under par. Tony Kendall, New Zealand... A shot of 71 today. He's still under par. Billy Dunk had a good round of 69. Kel Nagel shot a 70. He's still under par. And Rick Wines, he's a local pro, incidentally, a shot of 75. And uh, he is square with the card. So it's a pretty interesting tournament. The 
charity for the Rick Wines bit. Guy Wollstonehand, still a comfortable leader in the three years... Oh. Play this back to you as the last bloody thing I do, Alan. All right. I was going to be cruel. Now, this is what I want to say. You right? Yep, yep. If they don't stop laughing, I'll tell them. <laughs> right. Right. Would you walk out? Guy walks. Oh, damn it. Just give me. Here we go. Guy Wollstoneham, still a comfortable leader in the uh, Victorian Open. Alan Mappin for three years at sport. Newsmen are called on to attend many functions in the course of their daily routine and, of course, never mix pleasure with business. If, for instance, a reporter does have the occasional drink, then clear enunciation and solid concentration can fool the most critical ear. <laughs> It's 5.30 in Melbourne. Barry Goodyear for Three Years Ed News. Mm. <laughs> the ACTU case for equal pay for women is likely to go before the Arbitration Commission later this year. The ACTU executive today discussed the plans for the case in Adelaide. The ACTU president, Mr Hogg, said the case is likely to go before the Arbitration Commission later this year. Mr. Hawke says the executive is expected to formulate a new approach to the question of planning a campaign aimed at the, the securing of equal pay for equal women employed under important classifications. A man who said he wanted to kill himself stole a plane at gunpoint today at Gastonia Airport at North Carolina, crashed it, then walked back and took another plane and wrecked that one too. Then police overpowered him. An off-duty detective said that the rifle the man was carrying out of his hands was hauled away uninjured when he in emerged from the wreckage of his second su suicide attempt. The man earlier had told the airport manager, Dick Campbell, that he wanted to give himself a plane, and when Campbell asked if he was joking, the man fired a shot over his head. The man said... He wanted to fly a plane over a place called Indian Trail, and then later he killed himself. The Minister for Trade and Industry, Mr Anthony, has attacked as deplorable and disgraceful a Labour Party suggestion that the Tariff Board should consider price policies when conducting inquiries into an industry. Mr Anthony said the ALP intended to approach tariff protection by using a, a policy of what he termed the carrot and the stick. He was supplying to Dr. D. N. Elringham, ALP in Queensland, who asked if Mr. Anthony agreed with the opposition's proposal that the board should include recommendations that prices and price policy from the protected industry. <laughs> Mr. Anthony said the board now believed that it was only natural that the prices and the profitability of a board should be taken into account. 3UZ Newsport, 3O time, 3O2. Everything that's said or done on radio goes onto a device put in by Big Brother called a Soundscriber. It goes on recording 24 hours a day. We asked for and got from Big Brother this delightful example of animated news. Once again, Batty Goodyear. A large crowd watched a fisherman try to land a 10-foot shark tonight on the pier at Frankston. The fisherman, who was using a line with only a breaking strain of 30 pounds, fought the shark for 45 minutes before the line broke and the shark swam away with the hook and several feet of line in his mouth. A similar shark, a 10-foot white pointer, had been reported swimming off Frankston earlier this afternoon. Coast Guard officials at Frankston tonight warned swimmers that the shark will probably still be in the area tomorrow and is now likely to be extremely savage and aggressive. They said tonight that people entering the water in the area tomorrow should keep on the alert. 
The average listener probably knows how serious newsmen have to be in compiling their stories and the various community services which are required. An example would be the beach reports, on which thousands listen for the cold hard fact. <laughs> Your cap'n on here. Ha, ha. I run a tight ship. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, most of the time they're tight. Ha, 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 Let's cross out a to snap a date. Ha, ha, ha. Sitting on the wharf. Ha, ha, ha. Get that wooden leg comfortable. Ha, 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 ha. And come in, snapper. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you. At Willoughby, the Footscray Anglers Club reports light rain there at the moment. It's overcast with smooth seas. It may get a little rough later. Whiting is good, but flathead Apache. Some good snapper yesterday and plenty of garfish, but they'll not take the bait, so they suggest that fishermen experiment. Lonsdale light, overcast, but not much rain. The wind is light northwest to southwest with smooth seas. High tide at the heads was at 6.53 this morning and the low tide at 1.27 p.m. At Frankston, Lorry Viewing reports overcast weather but only very light rain. It's calm with a very light breeze. Good big snapper and good small snapper at the reefs. White bait is the best at the moment. Good catches of whiting within one and a half miles offshore. And at Carrum, Alf Priestley says it's overcast, very little rain, but it may blow up later in the morning. Well, let's take a break right now. I wonder how John Ford's going. Not too good by the sound of it. As you realise, we couldn't use his first newsbeat story. Over to John. Outside the Oxford Hotel in uh, Swanson Street, a report of a brawl here. There is a milling crowd around, and the bloke here has apparently been knocked over. Is he all right? Yeah. What happened? Got a kick in. What started it all? Oh, I don't know. Them, you know. Did you see it? No. There's a civil oh, ambulance right. on the way, Jeff. There's an ambulance on the way. Who was it? All right. All right, we'll sit in on the fence again. Who was it? I'm all right, buddy. Sit down, mate. Sit down. Me, I'm all right. All right. Right, cunts. Is he a friend of yours? Yeah. Did you see this? Do you know what started the fight? I said, you fucking long head cunts jumped in. Where? Where are they? I know where I fucking jumped in. I fucking hiding too, the cunts. Well, what's what started it all? Look, it, it was me mate was just walking in those cunts just fucking walked out. Yeah, well, don't swear, don't swear. Don't swear. Don't swear, man. They jumped me, mate. I jumped in. They give it to me. They give it to me. I don't know where they're going. Well, something must have started it. Did you see what started it? Did you see what started it? Oh, I saw one big long road. All what? I saw one big long one. It was just continuous. It came out. It came out from one side of the pub, yeah. and it came right through to this side. But well, what were they doing? Shut up, say nothing, comes a cop. What were they doing? Oh, they just fighting. For no apparent reason? Oh, I didn't Shut see it. I was standing outside. And they just picked your mate here? Yeah. There's a police brawl wagon pulled up here and the crowd's thick again too. And uh, I think they've got someone in. And he sounds like he's going to kick the door of the brawl wagon out if he can too. He's trying. <laughs> How many did you get, Constable? I was about four. Right. You've got four in there, right. haven't you? Shut up! I'm Frank, shut up! Why, oh, Lorraine, it was weak as piss. Here's a couple more to go in too as they open the door and one back. <laughs> hurtling out the door then when the police opened it to put two more in and you heard the screams of the girls in the crowd. There's about six in there all together now. And the police have really had their hands full with this lot too. Oh, come on, To be good, a newsman must be a walking encyclopedia. All the facts and know all the words. The world's leading authority on gynecological cancer, Professor Hans Kottmeyer, yesterday warned young women against starting sexual intercourse too early in life. Professor Kottmeyer, who is head of the Department of Gynecology at the Radian Hospital Stockholm, was addressing doctors at St. Vincent's Hospital in Sydney. He said that although proof was difficult to obtain, the male partner might be responsible for originating cancer of the cervix, the neck of the womb. 
He said studies suggested that some form of infection from secretions of the skin of the male sex organ could originate this cancer. Up to now, we've given you a few examples of how concise, clear news is done on 3UZ. Of course, the other stations do have their moments. My feelers bears out what we've been saying all along, because they are what mountaineers that have got all places. I really feel quite sick inside that there's, there's nothing I can do here. It's like just have faith that it is okay. That was Mrs Lyons talking, uh, Mrs Clark talking with Gerald Lyons. A woman motorist who put her car in the wrong gear today created... I'm sorry, I'll try this again. A woman motorist put her car in the wrong gear today and created a drive-in restaurant. Her car shot forward in the parking lot of the restaurant and tore a 12-foot hole in the front of the building, narrowly missing a diner seated inside. And also we've received word from a sergeant out of the Glen Huntley Police Depot that uh, a very valuable racehorse uh, called Land, I believe it's just been recalled from racing and now going to stud. It's a nine-year-old chestnut gilding and police are inclined to think perhaps it's been stolen. We're outside Sears at the moment. You have an accident, sir. Where is it? Uh, Elizabeth and... Uh, Elizabeth and... Elizabeth, well, somewhere near Elizabeth Street. Watch out for that one, Mr. Motorist. The barber collapsed and died in the street. And the gunman then shot a passerby. A man in Canada who thinks bears are trying to take over the world, <coughs> pardon me, today shot and killed a large Kodiak bear in the zoo in Toronto. He fired at least a dozen shots into the bear. Police arrested him and charged him with possessing a dangerous weapon. The man told them that bears were trying to take over the world and therefore he'd done a right and patriotic thing by killing one of them. Nearly 4,000 United States First Division infantry uh, men in infantrymen have landed at a bay 185 miles north of Saigon. The national serviceman who contacted meningitis at Pakapanyo has been taken off the seriously ill list at Fairfield Infectious Disease Hospital. And that's the news to this moment. No matter where you are, you'll hear it first on 3UZ. Uh, just before you go back to the party, John, at five minutes past four, tell us how you pronounce Pakapanyo again. Uh, Pakapanyo. That's very good. That's the funniest thing I've ever heard. I don't know what you quite said. Was it Panapakula or something like that, but I've been kicking yeah. ever since. Yes, I got it mixed up with meningitis. Yes, well, it was very funny, believe you me. Uh, you killed me. I really giggled all the way through that news, guys. That was a swing. I really enjoyed that. Panapakula. Funniest thing you've ever heard. Just say it once more. Just say it properly, you know, just to convince people that you can say it. Once more. Here we go. Oh, that was excellent. Yeah, do that again. No. It's been announced in Paris that the French apprentice jockey, Robert Jaloux, will fly to Australia next month to ride on the Adelaide trainer, or for the Adelaide trainer, Colin Hayes. All swimmers are advised to pay special attention to the signals from 3UZ shark spotter aircraft. Contact! When you hear this... Look out! Sharks are close to shore. Signifies the all clear. Sharks have changed course and have moved out to sea. A shark in shallow water is exceptionally dangerous. Oh, oh heavens! Do remember? Yes, darling. On shore, tune your transistor to 3UZ, 930 on your dial. In the water, listen for the siren. Stop this Noel Coward dialogue. Impression given last year that he doesn't like bosoms. The V's, whether narrow or wide from the shoulder blades, have a tight construction through the rib cage, pushing the... <laughs> One deep plunging V is cut to the bottom of the rib cage. The high collarless necklines receive a new banded trim of self-fabric which is cut separately and tacked at the front or evolved from modified draping. The loose arched loop, Dior calls them ribbon collars, fall free at the back. A Texan millionaire, Jack Danziger, who trains young Latin Americans for ranch work, yesterday paid £44,000 for a one-third interest in a registered Aberdeen Angus bull, thus making the animal the world's most valuable bull. The bull is registered as Prince 105 SAF. His sire, 105TT, <laughs> valued at £102,000, was regarded previously <laughs> the world's most valuable <laughs> I would like to thank the press with whom we cannot live. I'm sorry, with whom we could not live without. <laughs> Lunchtime crowds parted and traffic snarled 
as a nude man ran past the taxation department in the heart of Sydney today. Eyewitnesses said the man appeared from completely nowhere, naked and obviously distressed. As women screamed, he ran, ran along the pavement and into Martin Place. He slipped on the wet roadway and dragged... I beg your pardon. Now let's have a call from 3DB. Our 11 o'clock call is for W.R. Twit of 10 Will Street. Glen Iris. And there's $4 uh, waiting for you. W.R. Twit. Glen Iris. This is the Herald Sun Radio News, London, Britain's strike by merchant seamen began this morning. The strike over pay and conditions has no time limit. Two and a half thousand ships are tied up and ports will be choked with idle vessels. The effect of any long strike on Britain's overseas trade is causing concern. In Canberra, government circles say the strike may cause a last minute cut in Australia's export check by holding up consignments... Pardon me. Canberra, a Department of External Affairs officer, has died in Jakarta after a brief illness. He was Mr. Bernard Patrick Alexander Murphy, a member of the Communications and Courier staff. Mr. Murphy, age 54, is on a routine call to Jakarta. Melbourne, the nationwide equal pay week organised by the ACTU. <laughs> open today. Union officials will address dozens of lunchtime meetings throughout Victoria this week for introduction of equal pay. <laughs> Sydney, New South Wales. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. New South Wales will make an urgent appeal next month for federal aid to meet a drastic deterioration in finances facing it it's coming for naturally. <laughs> yeah. Let's have the weather. <laughs> In Melbourne, fine and cool, with some cloudy periods and light southerly winds. Expected top temperature 60 degrees. <laughs> the next news at 12. Quite a good run right through to the city. Aircraft? There's something like a little more than moderate traffic on both New Footscray Road and Diamond Road. However, the city-bound bank up at Dudley Street on New Footscray Road is becoming quite pronounced already, so Diamond Road the better run. Both arteries, however, clearing quite well through North Melbourne. Back to three is at the The time is one and three quarters to eight o'clock. More on power, smooth power, controls combustion reduces. Uh, what did he say? The last Ampol Road Report of the morning. The greater three, you said. The Ampol, baby. Channel feet traffic. Up to the Skyway, Cessna Aircraft. D for Danny, B for Brian, Cool off B six, with eight, Selza two. Saline. Now that fellow up in the airplane was doing his homework before, but now let's call him in for the last Ampol Road report. Come on in. Oh, it wasn't me at all. Anyway, traffic coming from the west. Well, firstly, it appears somebody's pistol picked up that pistol on Conrad on the southeastern freeway near the Chapel Street Bridge. You must have been short of one. In another incident, a youth fell off the roof of a telephone booth and landed on top of a policeman. Police say that nobody was seriously hurt in the demonstration. The United States Secret Service has charged a California University employee with printing more than $4 million in bogus $20 and $50 bills. The money was due to go into circulation when the Secret Service broke up the seven-man counterfeiting ring. Tao and Fat tried to throw out Khan and put in Keem, but Keem wouldn't go and Khan made a comeback. Then T and Key decided they didn't want Tao, Fat, Keem or Khan. Anyone who's still confused is in good company. So how do you feel about the fact that the Beatles have been awarded the OBE merit badge? Uh, no, you're right, just talk. Don't bother holding it. All right. <laughs> yeah. No, she's right, just talk. All right. <laughs> you don't... you feel they should be awarded? 
No. <laughs> Why? Why? Oh, dead loss. Well, the blaze is still fierce in many places, and as a result of this fire, two factories have been gutted and one homely left families. We have a lot of publicity regarding the short Hollywood marriages. Now, after 17 years of marriage, what is your formula for a long marriage? Well, I think understanding. Uh, 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 I'm rooting for her, and she roots for me. Where did they get their nose damage? They hit each other head on first, did they? No, no. The cab driver was going up towards Keith Rock. Yeah. Up that way. Yeah. Right. Uh, the bell turned back in and hit the cab driver right up the arm. With the rear of the house is quite a large bungalow. I take it you reside here? Yes, I reside right here. Did you have a lucky escape when the fire started? My buddy over did. In what way? I in the bloody room, I was asleep. Somebody said the fire didn't believe him. I didn't believe it. I said, well, Christ, the next thing, a fucking water coming all over me. They fighting fucking shit out of me. Fucking water coming everywhere. The old fella come out and he said, hey, fire, fire. I said, fuck, fuck it. I, I mean, I'm a fucking Indian, fucking China. I've been fucking fired before. He said, fire, they only fucking funding. Gee, the next fucking thing, the fucking water getting me in the fucking face. Fucking bloody hell out of me. <coughs> Dead. <coughs> That's right, I'll fully can tell you. In an interview with a Macquarie News reporter, Mr. Carter paid tribute to Mr. Faulkner in these words. Well, uh, not entirely unexpected because we knew that... Mr. Kennedy said the three men were arrested as they were preparing to flee the country. This news comes to you from the ABC. For Christ's sake, shut up! An, Aust an Australian Boer War officer shot by a British firing squad 62 years ago, is to be honoured at Bathurst, New South Wales, tomorrow week. The United States intends to increase bombing of North Vietnam, North Vietnam, North, North Vietnam supply routes to the south. The United States proposes to increase its bombing of North Vietnam. The American Defense Secretary, Mr. McNamara, told newsmen in Washington last night that there would be increasing emphasis on the bombing of infiltration routes in the north. The American commander in South Vietnam, General Westmoreland, said early this week that the bombing so far had failed to stop daily reinforcement of North Vietnamese units in the south. This is the news from the ABC, read by Paul McClay. I'm sorry about that. I swallowed some water the wrong way. The small South Pacific Kingdom of Tonga will crown its monarch tomorrow in a ceremony following the royal traditions of England and the ancient customs, feasting and dancing of Polynesia. King Taufa Ahahu, whoops, I'm sorry, King Taufa Ahahu to Pau, who stands six feet four and weighs 21 stone, will don his coronation robes. The fortune of naval chaplains has fucked fluctuated. Strong and gusty cold southwest winds developing overnight. <laughs> One developing then too. <laughs> Chance of hail with the change. Scattered showers after the change. The outlook Tuesday, winds moderating. <laughs> Riverina and MIA. <laughs> Sorry about that. Cold gusty southwest winds with scattered showers. Outlook Tuesday, winds slowly moderating. <laughs> Upper western, cold gusty southwest winds becoming general. Showers developing ahead of the change and becoming isolated after it. And the lower western, showers becoming scattered. <laughs> cold and strong southwest winds. The Indian government has decided that the city, the city of Chandigarh... Good progress is being made on a sewerage scheme for the street, and more than 100 men are now working on the project. The scheme is estimated to cost about $1,500,000, and the first home should be connected to the service in about 12 to 18 months. The scheme is being carried out by the Public Works Department for the Wyong Shire Council, 
At the present time, the treatment works at Bateau Bay are under construction as well as the <laughs> outfall drain to the sea. The council's engineer, sewerage engineer, Mr. R. Slater, said that 6,000 <laughs> buildings at <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. At Long Jetty to Wan Bay, the entrance, the entrance north, Kalani, and Bateau Bay would be connected <laughs> progressively. Radio's golden anniversary, 50 fabulous years. So as you see, news has changed. Let's ask this fellow in the street just how he views radio news. That's what I use weak, use weak, use this. 